Hey guys, in today's video, we are going to talk about ES6 fat arrow function. We will see how we can convert a regular function into an arrow function. We will also discuss when to use and when not to use the arrow functions in our projects. So the arrow function has two main benefits. The first one is it allows us to write a shorter syntax which makes our function concise and compact. And the other important one is that it allows us to use the context of this keyword lexically. If you need some understanding on this keyword, then check out my video on this keyword in JavaScript. Just click on the card above. Also, don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. So let's get started. Alright guys, so we are going to start with a simple uh, regular function. So I'm going to create a function and I will name it as display name and this function will not have any arguments and it's going to return the page. So I'm going to write the page and let's console this function. So I'm going to do a console log display name and let's save it. So if I save it, you can see that I get the name the page. Now let's convert this regular function into an arrow function. So in order to convert this into an arrow function, I will just comment this out. So it was a named function. So I'm going to use a let and I'm going to give the name as display name and I will convert it into a function expression. And then I'm just going to use the parenthesis and after the parenthesis, I'm going to use a arrow. So you can do the arrow by equal to and a greater than or a less than symbol. And then you can simply return here the page. So I'm going to write the page here again and the result will still be the same. But the arrow function is actually giving us a shorter syntax. We have eliminated the function keyword now, but we can actually eliminate more stuffs. So one key thing of the arrow function is that whatever is on the right side of the arrow is implicitly returned. So you don't need to add a return keyword and you can remove the return keyword and you can also remove the curly braces. So if I remove the curly braces as well, and if I save it now, I still get the same result. So now let's see in another example where we actually accept an argument. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uncomment this out and I'm going to use an argument here name and it's going to return a simple argument. So I'm going to add name here again and I will comment this out and I will pass the name here. So let me pass name as the page Malvia. All right, and if I save it, you can see that now I get the name as the page Malvia. And now let's convert the same regular function into an arrow function. So to convert this same into an arrow function, you will still be using the same. And in the parenthesis, you will add the argument. And here we will just return the name. All right, and if we do that, we still get the same. But you can make this syntax more shorter, just removing the parenthesis. So if you have only one argument, you can actually remove the parenthesis else well. So now if I save it, you will see that I still get the same result. Let's try the third example where we actually try to accept two arguments. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to create a new function and the name of the function is multiply and it's going to accept two arguments a and b and it's going to return me a multiplied by b all right and then i'm going to do a console.log and i'm just going to call the function and passing two arguments as 5 and 4 all right so this is going to give me a result 20 so now let's convert this function into an arrow function so to convert this into an arrow function, you can use let again and then multiply having a function expression, pair of parentheses, a comma b as arguments and have an arrow and then we can return. So I'm going to return a multiplied by b. All right. And I will comment this out. And now if I save it, then I still get the same result. And also I can remove this 
return statement it is going to be returned implicitly so I will remove this and we get the same result so when you have no arguments if you don't have any arguments you need to have the parenthesis but if you have a single argument like simple a then you can actually eliminate the parenthesis but if you have two arguments then you need to have the parenthesis back otherwise it's going to give you an error so let's put the parenthesis back and other thing I want to show you is that you have an implicit return that's correct but you can only do the implicit return if you have only one line of statement in your function so here we can see that we have only one line of statement but what if I have some other statement as well I have a variable C and then I do a multiplied by B and then instead of returning a multiplied by B I'm going to return C all right and the result is still the same but can I just remove this curly braces in this case no you cannot remove the curly braces in this case so you can only remove the curly braces and the return keyword if you have only one single statement that is being returned from the function so far we have seen the named functions now let's see an example with the anonymous function or an unnamed function so I'm going to remove this and I'm going to add a set timeout function and the set timeout takes an anonymous function so let's write an anonymous function and this anonymous function is simply going to console log and hello world after one second so I'm going to add a thousand millisecond here so this function is going to execute it after one second or thousand milliseconds so if I do it then you can see that we have the hello world after one second now converting this anonymous function into an arrow function you will remove the function keyword and you will add an arrow and if I save it you still get the same result but there is another way of uh, having this you can assign this arrow function to a variable so I'm going to use a CB callback and I will be assigning this to the function and we can actually remove this parenthesis also curly braces because we are having only one line of statement being returned all right and then I can use a callback here so it's going to give me the same result so we saw different examples and we converted these examples into an arrow function but this is not the only thing which arrow function gives us apart from this the syntactic sugar or the compact and concise function arrow function also allows us to use the this context lexically and let's understand that so I'm going to remove this I'm going to use a person object here and this person has a property called name and it has a method called display name and this display name is a function so let me add a regular function first all right and I'm going to do a console dot log this dot name and we know that if we want to call a function which is defined in the object then we can simply use person dot the name of the function all right and now if I save it then I will get the name the page but let me create an another function here I'm going to create a set timeout function here and I'm going to use a regular function then this regular function will console dot log the same value this dot name but it's going to console log after thousand milliseconds all right and now if I save it then I can see that I get the value the page from here but the line number seven is empty and it's not going to give me the value the page and why it is so when you use a regular function it binds the value of this and that's the reason that when you use the this keyword here it will bind the value to its callee which is person but when you use the this keyword here there is no calling context for this set timeout and when you don't have a calling context it's going to point to the window so if you want to verify you can do a console log this all right and if I do a console log this it's actually pointing to 
window and window doesn't have any property with the name. So that's why we get it empty. But this problem can be solved either you can use a let here. So if you use a let cell and assign the value of this to the self. And then everywhere where you are using the this keyword, you can actually use the self. And when you use the self, you get all the values correct. So we can also solve this problem by converting this regular function into arrow function. So let's me change this to a arrow function. All right. So I'm going to change this to arrow function and I will just change the self to this again. All right. And I will remove this line now. All right. And now if I save it, you can see that we still get the same result. And why is it so? So the arrow function allows us to use the this context lexically and the lexically means that first it is going to check in this scope the value of this and if it doesn't find any values it's not going to by default add window to it. It's going to check on the one level up scope that is it's going to check on the scope where this function is defined and this function is defined in this scope. So this is called lexical scoping. So it can see that the value of this here, if you want to see the value of this here, log this. So you can see that if the value of this at line number five is the object itself. So it's going to take the same value and assign to the this. And that's the reason by using the arrow function, we get the this context as person and that's why we get the value as the page. So this is how the arrow function allows us to use the context of this keyword lexically. But now you must be having a question that the page, why don't we change this function to arrow function? And let's try it. What happens? Let me change this to arrow function. And if I save it, then you are going to see that on line number four, which is this, the value is empty on line number five, which is this, the value is window object on line number eight. It's obviously going to take the value from the outer scope. So what is actually happening here? So when you convert the display name as an arrow function, it first going to check the value of this and here it doesn't know what actually the value of this is. So what is going to do? It's going to check the value of this on the one level up scope and the one level up scope for display name is actually the global scope, which is this. And if I console log this here, then it's the window. So this is one of the place where the arrow function is not at all suitable. So you should know that when to use the arrow function, and when not to use the arrow function. So here you are not supposed to use the arrow function. So if you remove this, let me remove all these additional stuff now. So this is the one place where the arrow function is not suitable. Let me show you an another example where you actually don't use the arrow function. So I will just remove this and I'm going to create a constructor function. So I'm going to use person. All right, and I'm not going to add any details here, but I'm going to do a console dot log new person. All right, and now if I save it, then you can see that I get the person in the console and the person has it's a constructor function and it has a prototype property. But if I convert this constructor function into an arrow function, so let me convert this into an arrow function. So I'm going to use let is equals to, I'm going to add an arrow here. So it's not giving me an error. So it's created an arrow function. But now if I save it, it actually going to give me an error. And that is why if you have an arrow function, you cannot use a new keyword with the arrow function because this arrow function doesn't create a constructor function. It is just an anonymous function. So that's the reason you cannot create a constructor function using an arrow function. So you cannot use the arrow function here. 
let me show you one more thing we know that every constructor function so let me change this back to a constructor function and I'm going to remove this again and I will remove this and we know that every constructor function has a proto property so if I write a prototype here then I'm going to get the proto properties of this constructor but if you convert this constructor into an arrow function function then it will not have a proto property it's going to return you an undefined so the ES6 arrow function is not a replacement of the regular functions it's just the additional features it provides you it, it helps you to change the syntactic sugar of your regular functions and it also helps you to have the usage of this keyword lexically but it's not that you can replace the regular function with the arrow function all over the places. So these are some of the examples where you can use the arrow function and where you cannot use the arrow function. So that's all about the arrow function in JavaScript. I hope you liked the video. A thumbs up is appreciated. Also don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. You can also connect with me via Facebook or Instagram. I will add the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.